Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and the Marvel series, the original Star Wars comic series, comes to an end in this episode. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. As always, we're looking this time at the last issue of the Marvel series, which is number 107. It just says last issue there, and you know things are going to get ugly when we've got R2-D2 facing backwards, Hirog of the Hiromi over there behind Leia, we have the Hujibs at the bottom, and we have Chewbacca apparently cradling Lando, and Chewbacca looking like basically a dog creature, not Chewbacca. This does not bode well. It's a story entitled All Together Now, and it sort of fits that name as far as the Alliance goes, but we'll get into that in a moment. You can also find this, by the way, as the last story, fittingly, in Star Wars Omnibus a long time ago, Volume 5. Now, this is another issue that's written by Mary Jo Duffy. It's the end of the series and the end of her run that she's been on for quite a while now. And it also includes the regular artist, or recent regular artist, Cynthia Martin's work. And this is where I sort of part ways with the logic of how she does the art. There are times when I'm not a big fan of her choice of lines, the way that things look fairly simplistic sometimes and kind of goofy at times, you know, fine, whatever. That's just stylized. I mean, hey, I like the art of Underworld, the Yavin Basilica, so stylized art isn't necessarily a bad thing, but hers just kind of seems a little odd at times. Well, we get her art again this time, and let me show you the first page of this. Check out this rebel character. Hunkered down on Saijo, which is actually a planet we saw uh, back a while ago. Uh, he's hunkered down on Saijo uh, from Cat's Paw, ready to deal with incoming, perhaps, invaders, toffs. Uh, he's got a big old cannon there, he's all buffed out, has that long hair with the bandana, very uh, Rambo style, right? Uh, Fabio with a gun, a BFG. So who is that character? Um, never in a million years, if you had put this in front of me, would I have thought, hey, that's Luke. Luke is the one who's all crazy, super buffed out, and leading this mission all shirtless and uh, uh, hunky style here. Never in a million years would I believe you if you told me that was Luke. But it is. Cynthia Martin has somehow decided that Luke very quickly got super, super buff, decides to run around with uh, no shirt, has long hair all of a sudden, and a bandana. I'm assuming this is meant to happen further along after the previous stories than we were usually led to believe uh, in the modern EU-type times. But really, that's really pushing it for Luke. And a lot of things we get here are sort of the, the characterizations of groups thrown together, like that art, that don't necessarily seem to fit together, but must fight together um, to win the day. Artwork aside, and that Luke is freaking ridiculous every time I look at it, um, we have an interesting mix of characters here. We have, up at the top, Den Siva, and of course over here we have Knife, over on uh, your left-hand side of the screen there, because the guy are now working with the Alliance of Free Planets against a common enemy, the Tonks. So we have Danny, we have Han and Leia there in the middle, we have former stormtroopers down there at the bottom, we had Finn Scheisse, we have C-3PO and R2-D2, and up there, who is that person in the red and orange and the guy over there in purple and sort of bluish? Oh, that's Triff and Maggie. Triff and Maggie? Who are Triff and Maggie? Yeah, from back in touch of the goddess, those two anonymous, all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, look, there's these two... X-Wing pilots for the Alliance that they're, you know, uh, counting down to destroying the planet to save Lando. Uh, all of a sudden, they're there. Well, here they are, and apparently they've hooked up because they make a note about how those two were former Imperials. They were welcomed into the fold, and now they're getting together. So what about the Nagai? Are they welcome fully? And is it possible for Den Siva and his obsession, I guess, with Danny to eventually wind up with love between them despite the fact that she hates him for killing Kiro? No, seems very unlikely, but they at least understand each other. They're traveling together despite the fact that they have the, this weird complex relationship uh, because they understand each other uh, better than others could understand either of them. They're sort of both outcasts in a way from their own people. The idea here is we sort of have a Battle of Endor type of moment going on here. Uh, the Toffs have resettled their leadership on Saijo, which they've blown to Kingdom Come mostly, but they've resettled in a building on Saijo as their new palace. And Prince Sereno, interesting, but no direct connection to the planet, slightly different spelling here. Prince Sereno is there on the planet. The Toffs, one of their decadent things is that uh, they've always believed that by making a military leader of their heir, they teach him responsibility and imbue his future subjects with respect for his heroism. So the heir of the Toffs 
is there. I guess the leader in this activity here in this part of the galaxy. Um, so if they can get to him, take him out, cause him to give up or cause him to surrender, that would be the end of the Nagai Toph War and the end of this conflict that's been raging apparently at this point for only less than a month because modern continuity sources place this issue in the end of the Nagai Toph War at the end of that month or so after the Battle of Endor. So not a lot of time has gone by, but Luke sure has managed to grow out his Fabio-ness right there. So they wind up setting a trap, this group, setting a trap for the Toffs. They wind up raiding the Toff facility, take out a couple of guards along the way and use them as hostages, essentially. Uh, Lando and Wedge, yes, Wedge is finally back in the series there from being gone for so long. He's there in the blue. Lando and Wedge and Chewbacca and Nine Number are going to be flying, essentially, so that the Imperial allies of the Toffs, yes, the Toffs have now allied themselves with the Empire, altogether now applies to them as well, thanks to Lumaya deciding that, hey, the best chance of going after and defeating the Alliance and killing Skywalker is to join with the Toffs, now that the Nagai have joined the Alliance. Um, they're going to stop Imperial reinforcement ships from getting down to the surface. Makes sense. So they've got that mission up above. We get essentially a direct assault while Lumaya is there meeting with Prince Sereno of the Toffs. We get a direct assault in which they sneak in as supposed Nagai prisoners. Uh, Leia and Danny, essentially dressed as uh, women in dresses and such, like a, a court courtly women in dresses and such, and they just open up an all-out assault in the throne room against Prince Sereno. Knife winds up being zapped, but only stunned, but it looks as though he's about to be killed by Lumaya, who now looks a little different there. She's got a mask a little bit more like her original one, and she is now in this huge flowing super cape slash dress slash garbage bag thing here that she is wearing. Leia winds up risking everything and shoots Lumaya to get her to back off of Knife, only then Lumaya is able to pull her blaster to her so that she can then kill Leia. Before she can do so, though, Han can't get there in time. It's farewell. It's kind of one of those, uh-oh, the blaster bearing down on Leia moments. What is going to happen? Sure enough, Lumaya gets blasted from behind, though she will manage to escape in all of the chaos. Blasted from behind, but by who? Looks like she was blasted by a Toph. But as he reveals, this Toph, who is, uh, uh, while Prince Sereno is basically surrendering the Toffs and saying, you know, the conflict is over, the war is over, we give up, my give up, my give up. Should be a Hiromi probably saying that. Um, this Toph reveals himself to be this spy within Saijo's ranks, within the Toph ranks on Saijo, because he was placed on Saijo, that was sent there under mysterious circumstances, who is Bay? Bay, that old friend of Han Solo who came with Finn Scheisse back, who's supposedly this hero around the galaxy, he is back. And apparently, after appearing to betray Han to save Knife, and to betray Knife to then disappear from the Nagai ranks, um, he actually was a rebel spy all along, one of the most trusted operatives that most people didn't know existed. He was there, he emerges, saves Leia by blasting Lumaya, and in a very, very quick wrap-up to the story, our characters have a quick conversation about how, hey, Bay, you're back, it's good to see you here, uh, uh, it's good that you were here to save your brother, and Bay's like, yeah, you know, I got two brothers. Han, there's Knife, my half-brother, and there's you, who I helped so much as a kid, uh, who I think of as a brother. And things wrap up here with, essentially, uh, Leia saying to Han, It's wonderful. Do you know what this means? And the shot down there with Luke, apparently very short, also with his crazy Fabio hair, saying, Sure, for the first time in a long, long time, all of us, as racists and as individuals, have a fair chance at making peace. And I hope... No, I know we can do it. No, may the Force be with us, or the Force will guide us, or anything. The Force will be with us always. Nope. With that, the Marvel series comes to an end. I don't know what to think about this issue, honestly. It's an issue that plays out well enough, but for being the climax of this arc, they've been building up ever since, really, the issues shortly after the events of Return of the Jedi. It kind of feels like it's a wasted opportunity. It wasn't as big and bombastic as it could have been. It wasn't as action-packed as it could have been. And for all the characters being crammed into one place, just a quick frontal assault and not much else in the way of battles, seems odd. Like, most of the Nagai Toph War seems like it's been taking place off-screen for us in the comics, and it's more the character moments here, which somewhat work, but when you're trying to build up the suspense and the menace, it doesn't work as well as it could have. So, 
this issue of the Marvel series, number 107, the last issue released in May of 1986, a full three years after Return of the Jedi was released in theaters, is it an essential read? I would say yes. To be able to follow the Nagai Toff War, you need to see its conclusion, and this is that conclusion. Weak as it perhaps may be in some respects, this is the conclusion that we have been building towards and waiting for for a while. And at this point, this is a landmark moment because the ongoing Marvel series, it goes all the way back, 114 issues, 107 regular, three annuals, and the four issue Return of the Jedi miniseries is now over. It's done. It's gone. All that's left to sate us at this point are Ewoks and droids from the Star Comics Marvel imprint rather than the mainstream Marvel line. I'm kind of sad to see it go given its place in the development of the Star Wars EU at the time, and this means that we are at an end to any post-Return of the Jedi Star Wars Expanded Universe stories outside the RPG and such until 1991. New Star Wars ongoing post-Return of the Jedi stories have ended in comics, and we never saw them in novels, uh, all the way up until the relaunch of the EU in 91 with Dark Horse and Bantam Spectra. So this is a seminal moment in the annals of Star Wars library history. And um, I'm glad you've been here with the show all through this series as we've been tackling this and the newspaper strips and everything else. Doesn't mean this series is going away. This is episode number 119. Uh, we won't even get out of the 1980s until episode number 130. So there's still more to come, mostly droids and Ewoks, and we have some surprises coming with a lesser-known Star Wars 3D comic series. So stick around. More good stuff to come, and eventually we will hit the 1990s and the more modern EU stuff. More good stuff is on the way. With that, we wrap up this omnibus, this comic series, this era of post-Return of the Jedi stories, and this episode of From the Star Wars Library. Thank you for watching, and as always, may the Force be with the readers.